Hey, what's up? It's Nathan here with the btccourse.com. And in this video, I'm gonna show you four different ways you could load Satoshis into your browser-based Bitcoin Lightning wallet. I use Albi, but this should work with any other Lightning browser-based wallet. Same concept would apply. So the four different ways, it goes from like most custodial and KYC to least custodial KYC solution. So that, that's kind of the path we're gonna take. So the first way to do it is with Strike. So Strike is a mobile app and it's very simple to use, but it is KYC. So you do have to have like upload your license and that type of information. Uh, but yeah, this is what it looks like on your mobile device. And what you would go ahead and do is sign up, you know, and then you'd add funds to Strike, which should all be pretty self-explanatory. You connect to your bank account and you load the funds in there and there you go. So you should have like a cash balance in your Strike wallet. And then you'd go to your Albi wallet or whatever extension that you're using. And you'd go ahead and click on that. And then you could click on receive right here. And then you could type in how many sats you wanna receive. So in this case, I wanna receive 10,000 sats. Create the invoice. And then what I wanna go ahead and do is load up my phone, my Strike app. And we have this QR code in the top right corner. So you go ahead and tap on that. And then you go ahead and scan over to your QR code that you just generated from Albi. And you see right there, you know, one cent routing fee, gotta love lightning. So $2.31 will be sent. So I'll just go ahead and tap on confirm then. And poof, payment received just like that. I've added $2.30 to my get Albi wallet. So yeah, Strike is a very easy way to do it if you have access to Strike. The next way is to use Cash App. So here I am in Cash App and in order to send Bitcoin from Cash App, we need to go ahead and buy it first. So what we do is go to where the Bitcoin is. So I have it right here. And we can see that I already have some Bitcoin in my wallet. So I don't actually need to buy any right now, but if you needed to buy some, you just go ahead and tap the buy button here and you could buy however much you wanna buy. And then you'd have the Bitcoin in your Cash App app. So I'm gonna just gonna tap out of there because I already have some. So that's simple enough. Now I need to come back over to Albi or whatever extension that you're using. And again, I wanna go ahead and click on receive. And the amount I want to receive, we'll do another 10,000 Satoshis. We'll create our invoice. And then same concept as with Strike. We'd go ahead and load back up our Cash App. So here we go. And I'd go ahead and tap this scanner square right here. So go ahead and tap that. Loads up my camera. And zoom over to my QR code. And there we go. We have our the amount of Bitcoin we want to send, $2.30 still. And yeah, no fees and everything. So I'm just going to hit tap, or not tap, hit pay uh, that amount of Bitcoin. So hit pay. I guess that's 10,000 sats in Bitcoin. 0 .00. And there we go, payment received. So that's just, that's how you do it with Cash App. Very simple, pretty self-explanatory. All right, so the next option then is Wallet of Satoshi, which is another mobile app. And Wallet of Satoshi is custodial, which means that they have ownership of your keys. So you've probably heard the expression, not your keys, not your crypto. Well, in this case, I mean, Strike has access to your keys, Cash App has access to your keys, and both of those are also KYC, so they know who you are. You have to upload your driver's license, stuff like that. Wallet of Satoshi, they have your keys, but it's non-KYC, so they don't know who you are, so that's kind of the, the benefit to Wallet of Satoshi. So anyway, in order to get sats here in the first place, we have to send Bitcoin to this wallet. So what I wanna go ahead and do is tap on receive right here in the bottom. And we see a few different options. We have Lightning, and we, for the sake of this example, we don't have anything on Lightning, so we can't receive via Lightning, but we could receive on Bitcoin uh, base chain. So I'm gonna go ahead and tap on Bitcoin right here. And then I have this QR code or this address. So what I would go ahead and do is take this address and then send Bitcoin to it from wherever I have Bitcoin. Maybe I have it on an exchange or maybe I have it on a wallet. I would send it to this address. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that now because I have some Bitcoin on Coinbase. I'm gonna go ahead and send it to this wallet of Satoshi address. So let me go ahead and get this address. And what I wanna do is go to where my Bitcoin is. And again, in this case, it's on Coinbase. And I'm gonna go ahead and go to my Bitcoin holdings right here. And 
I want to go ahead. I'll hit send and receive up here. And I want to send my Bitcoin. So I'll wait for it to slowly load. And I'm just going to type in $2.30 worth of Bitcoin because that's about 10,000 sats, as you can see right there. And I want to go ahead and send it to my Bitcoin address. And I'll go ahead and hit continue. And I'm getting an error because the minimum amount I can send is, it looks like 10,000 sats. So I'll just do $2.50. And then I'll hit continue again. And since this is an on-chain Bitcoin transaction, it does take about 30 minutes in order for it to send the payment out and confirm on the Bitcoin blockchain. I have a link to a video on the mempool and how that functions and how blocks function every 10 minutes or so. So if you need more information on the blockchain, check out that video, link in the description down below. So it will take a little bit of time since this is a main chain transaction uh, and we do have to pay a more significant fee because it is a main chain transaction. Uh, transaction. So we're actually be spending about $2.94 when we'll only receive $2.50. Hence the benefits of the Lightning Network, right? There's much less fees than when you do an on-chain transaction. But anyway, for this example, we're just going to do a send now. And I have to enter my code real quick. And there we go. It's sending now. I'm going to go ahead and click on view transaction real quick. And let me go ahead and look at it in the mempool. Maybe I'll see it. So I'll just go to mempool.space. And sometimes there's a little bit of delay from when Coinbase uh, sends it out, but we'll go ahead and see if we can find it. And it's not showing up yet, but I'll cut the video, so you'll see it in a second. Alrighty, so it popped up here. I can go ahead and click on this transaction number right here, and I can see that it is in one of the pending blocks. It looks like three blocks out, so in about 30 minutes. Hopefully that block will confirm, and the funds will be in my wallet as Satoshi Wallet once the block comes crosses this line right here and becomes a, a actual mined block. And again, I have a video on the mempool. So if you need more information about what we're looking at here, link in the description down below. And if you look in the Wallet of Satoshi app, you should see that you have some sats on the way. And I could click on that green question mark and payment on the way, blah, 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 and so on. So the sats are on their way. So the transaction is finally confirmed. As we see right here, we have one confirmation and we can see now in my wallet, I have 10,811 sets. So now basically same concept as with Strike and with Cash App, we're gonna go ahead and create an invoice in our Albi wallet. So I'm gonna go ahead and receive and I wanna receive 10,000 sets and I'm gonna go ahead and create the invoice. And then I wanna go ahead and go to Wallet of Satoshi and I'll go to send in the bottom right hand corner. And then I wanna go ahead and scan my QR code and we see that information, our transaction information. And of course I wanna just go ahead and click on pay. And 10,000 sets sent and received. So there we go. I've sent it from Wallet of Satoshi to Albi. Now the fourth way I wanna show you how to do this is using Moon Wallet. And this is a non-KYC, non-custodial way to do it. So that means that you don't have to give up your personal information and also you'll hold the keys to your crypto. So, you know, it's this is like the best way to go ahead and do this, but it's also kind of the more difficult way, I guess. But you'll see it's not that difficult. So I think this is probably the best way to do it. So real quick, I wanted to point out that I do have this video on how to use Moon Wallet. So if you need more information on how to get it set up, check out the link in the description down below. All right, so let's go ahead back to my phone real quick. So this is Moon Wallet, and it's kind of similar to Wallet of Satoshi. You need to send on-chain Bitcoin to this wallet, and then you'll be able to send out a Lightning transaction. So what we need to go ahead and do is receive Bitcoin here. So I'll go ahead and tap on receive. And you'll notice that we have the option to receive on-chain Bitcoin or Lightning Bitcoin. Again, we're doing on-chain, so we'll make sure that this option is selected. And then you'll want to go ahead and grab your wallet address right here. And then you want to go to wherever you have the Bitcoin. You might have it on an exchange. You might have it in a wallet somewhere. Wherever your Bitcoin is, you need to go get it. Again, I have some over here on Coinbase, so I'm just going to use the stuff I have already. And what I want to go ahead and do again, similar to Wallet Satoshi, is I'm just going to go ahead and send receive. And I want to send. I want to send two dollars and fifty cents worth. And I want to grab my wallet address, plug it in there, and continue. And again, on-chain transaction. So we got to pay the fees and all that stuff. Go ahead and do send now. And plug in my authenticator app code. And I'm going to go ahead and view transaction again. And I'll copy my wallet address 
And I'll go to the mempool or mempool.space, plug it in there, look it up. Nothing showing up quite yet, but I'll cut the video and you'll see it. Alrighty, it just popped in here. So I'm gonna go ahead and look at the transaction ID right here. And I see it, that it's in this third block right here. So I gotta wait for it to cross this dotted line right here and confirm. So I'll be back when it does that. Oh, and real quick, in Moon Wallet, just like Wallet of Satoshi, it shows that we have some sats coming in. I can see this little clock here, this yellow clock. I can tap on it. Oh, nope, if you tap on it, it hides it. But I can click this up arrow down at the bottom, and I can see that I have some Satoshis confirming from the Bitcoin network. So, waiting for that to confirm, and then we'll be able to do the next step. And now we can see that the transaction has confirmed. Right here we have one confirmation and our block is now blue because it is confirmed, it has been mined. Now we can see in my moon wallet, we don't have that little orange clock anymore. So we're good to go. Now we're gonna do the same thing that we did with the last three wallets. We're gonna go ahead and create an invoice in Albi and then send the Satoshis over to our Albi wallet. So let's go ahead and load up Albi one last time. Receive, again, 10,000 sats and create invoice. And then I want to go to my moon wallet and I want to go ahead and tap on send. And then I just scan my code. And then I want to go ahead and send. And there it goes and payment received just like that. Another 10,000 sats in my Albi wallet. And that pretty much covers it for this video. Four different ways to get Satoshis into your browser-based Lightning wallet. Again, I appreciate any sorts of likes, comments, subscribes, anything like that. Or follow me on thebtccourse.com and have a great rest of the day.